the living have rich and poor neighborhoods, so do the dead. In the mid-19th century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. Here lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple. Mitchell, who fought with Dunn during the war, tried to pass as Yale's doctor. clear that the burglar came by the house before heading to the gym, which means he probably didn't find what he was looking for in here. O'Leary wouldn't have sent Randall to kill Dunn. He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. A Celtic cross. Supposedly, the ring keeps the devil at bay by reflecting the sunlight. Really handy at this time of the day. If this had been here over 30 minutes, it'd be covered in ants. A 
I've never trusted angels. When they fall... They turn into demons. It'd be even better with a skull between the bats. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradwick's tomb to pay their respects. It's strange that I don't see any. Maybe they're gone with the wind, or somebody claimed them as part of their inheritance. Still hot. I found a baseball glove at Joe Dunn's place. A glove signed by a great star. I couldn't believe my luck. I've always been a New York Warriors fan. Although, to be honest, they're not what they used to be. Yep, they just haven't been the same without Craig Spano. I'm investigating a case of sports corruption. I think a considerable amount of athletes are involved, both current celebrities and former stars. Mm-hmm. 
cities. Ugh, they're the absolute worst. I'm FBI agent John H. Blackmore. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. Your turn. Why did you meet with Joe Dunn? Because he was looking for me. He came here one morning, but I was uh, too embarrassed come down because he left a baseball with his initials on on by the tombstone Sam's diner tomorrow 12:30 a.m. because he he knew they want to kill me what did he want from you and who wants to kill you one question at a time how's joe what would happen if i told him the truth would he lose it could I take that chance? He's in hiding, just like you. He also fears for his life. That's why he hired me. That's why he called the FBI. My turn. What was your glove doing at Dunn's place? Because that's how it happened. I forgot the damn glove when I fled the house, running from the guy who came after me. A guy hired by the man who ruined my life, and so many others. A guy hired by the very same man that killed Joe. Our old friend, the surgeon. Is Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? That surgeon you mentioned, is he? My turn. I want to know why I should trust you. Do it for Joe Dunn, our common friend. It's my turn. That surgeon that you mentioned, is he in this photo I got here? Ow! Hey! Ah. Uh. Hey, that toss was... Huh? Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. The bastard had avoided my scrutiny by passing as a hospital doctor. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise, or how well he hid, I would find him. So, what you're saying is, one, there's a corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. Two, 
Our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Dunn, right? Maybe, but it could be no more than a false lead. Anyway, where was I? Number three, right? Three, since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell, or whomever, hired an anteater to get rid of him. Then, since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell, or whomever, killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with the common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Craig Spenow. Do you really trust him? I have the feeling there's something Craig didn't tell me. I don't know what exactly, but I'll find out. Four. No, I mean, five. Dunn was murdered five... I mean, four days after taking Spenno to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? No, it doesn't add up. Why not? Just a hunch. Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff that even though you're sure Yale is innocent, you think he's hiding something. But what about O'Leary? Um, six. Nah, I know O'Leary, and he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have taken matters into his own hands. What about Cassidy? Seven, right? I think it's safe to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through, so he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So, even if you have your doubts, Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. 